Well, I think we're waking Las Vegas up a little bit with all the interviews I'm having so far. It's all to do with the entertainment. It's with the very young, the middle, and the older. And it's fascinating how all the stories are on Vegas Live with Ninon. Of course, I'm your host, Ninon. And I have Ina Holiday with me. And Ina Holiday, um, she said, Ninon, I could tell you so many, many stories about Vegas. She said, but I can't mention a lot of them because a lot of you are still alive. So she's going to zip it. <laughs> but at the same time, you had a tremendous career in singing in Vegas. You were saying you sang with Frank Sinatra. <laughs> no, I knew him. You knew him. I actually started in England. I England? I didn't even know that. That's cool. What my are the Palladium? No, no, my mother was British. She was a big band singer. Oh, really? Entertained all the troops during World War II. And I uh, was a child star. And, oh, how uh, fabulous. I followed in her footsteps, and I wrote, produced, and arranged my own album that David Bowie's band, The Spiders from Mars, played on. Oh, my goodness. I had the same manager as Ozzy Osbourne in Yes, who called me up at 2 o'clock in the morning and said, Orna, I'm bringing around the roller. I need to talk to you. And I oh, said, with a great, <laughs> with a great <laughs> English accent. <laughs> it was a cockney. And I said, well, OK, Brian. And I got in the car with him. He said, uh, my wife is in the hospital having our second child and I want to leave her and marry you. Oh, oh this is... And I said, you're crazy. I don't love you. I now, were you dating him a little no, bit on the I, side? No, he was my manager. And oh, he, your manager. He was my manager. He managed Yes and me and Ozzy Osbourne Black Sabbath. I had been in the studio with the Spiders for a year. The album was completed. And he, 2 o'clock in the morning, he asked me to marry him. And what did I, you say? I said, I don't love you. Like you're not awake. Oh, I have so many of those. He said, I, he said, I don't love you, and you're, that's, that's, that's horrible. Come. His wife is having a child as, as we spoke. So I said, well, that's it. I knew Aaron Russo, who managed Bette Midler at the time. And I said, well, Aaron has offered me a job with A&M Records, and I'm going to be a songwriter there because I was also a songwriter. So I said, I'm leaving. I'm in a huff because I was very insulted that well, he was... Well, 2 o'clock in the morning <laughs> being proposed to when, when his wife is in the hospital I'm having not. a baby. And I was insulted. You know how you are at that age. I thought, uh, I thought he was my talent he liked. Yes. And so I got on a plane. I, I met Aaron at Elaine's in New York the next day. Oh, I don't wow. know how he found me. Aaron was there. And uh, we were having lunch. And Brian somehow found me. And uh, we were talking. And all of a sudden, the phone rang. And the old cell phone yeah, yeah. was this big. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, excuse me. But my two million pound income is ODing in the bathroom somewhere. I've got to go. So <laughs> he put the phone down. He disappeared. I stayed in New York for a few months. And I decided I was going to go to Vegas. And if I was going to sing, that's how I ended up in Las Vegas. So you've been in Vegas a long time. Yes. And, and who have you sung with any of the big, the big stars? So, well, I was in 1974 I came. Yeah. And I actually started out as a Baccarat shill at the Riviera. Oh, wow. Because I just had to, I had Do to start something. doing something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, though there's a story there, but I won't tell it on on camera. <laughs> I'm dying to hear it now, aren't you? Well, yeah, come on. <laughs> Meshulam Rickless owned the hotel. That's yes. a hint. Yes. So and he anyway, was married to Piers Adora. Well, no, this, maybe not at that I time. I knew him before he married her. Okay. Anyway, so I'll tell you that story privately. Anyhow, <laughs> um, so I I got off at 12 o'clock at night. And I, would, I knew the words to two songs, because all the other songs I knew I wrote. Yeah. And they had big lounge shows, so the first big place... Big lounge, yeah, they yeah. had fabulous lounge shows. Midnight I went, the first one was to the Desert Inn. And I met Joey Bishop there. And uh, he said, why don't you get up and sing? And I said, well, I don't have a stage name. And I said something funny. He goes, oh, Ina, you're such a holiday. And that's oh. how Ina Holiday from Joey Bishop, I got that name. I got up and sang my one song I knew my key to, the one of the two. That they all could play for you. Right. Everything and was good. Then I said, oh, I'm sorry, I have to go. Then I would go to work, and the next night I, night I would go to a different casino and a different casino and a different and lounge. And you would get up and sing that one song. That one song. Oh, I have to go. I came back around to the Desert Inn. They go, I in a holiday. Would you like to sing with us? And I said, sure. And I sang the second song. I was making... So now you have two songs. I was making $6 an hour at, at the, the back of well, by that time, I had gotten a job at the Aladdin, making six twenty-five an hour. So now I was well, coming up, up in the world, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> and uh, I got a phone call in the in the pit there. They had their own pit, yeah. and I worked till seven there. Yeah. And they said, "Listen, we have a group snowed in from Chicago. We heard you're a singer from New York. Can you go on tonight at nine? 
I said, sure, no problem. I had no band. Say, I love your guts. I had no band. I had no group. I had just knew Charlie Schaefer, who's still in town here, who played for an addition for me with Walter Kane, uh, who uh, another story I'm not going to say on camera, Got and uh, the Sands, who hired me. And anyhow, I, I called Charlie. No, I'm playing. I got a band together by, by 7 o'clock, ran home, got changed in the nicest thing I had in my book. Yeah, yeah. And I, they had just opened the first 200-seater lounge there. And I didn't grasp the magnitude of what I had what done. What you were doing and where <laughs> you were going. You, <laughs> just, you just were singing these songs on a stage. Till I walked into the casino and found the 200-seater lounge that they had just opened up packed with people, the biggest draw in How Vegas, amazing. the Irish show band playing, they had their own dancing girls, there was smoke billowing out of there, they had their own light man. I didn't even meet my band, and I thought, oh my God, Ina, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> this is How serious. How old were you this, this time? I was in my early 20s. Then. Early 20s. I thought they were well. going to die. I thought this, you know, as I said, I didn't realize what I had done until I really walked in and it, it well, I'm gonna, now I'm going to entertain all these people. Well, and I had never rehearsed. I never met my band. I met them on the side of the stage at 20 minutes before we were going on. The Irish show band had just, was cocktails, just coming off. Cocktails, And uh, all great, all the front men then, you know, didn't want their side men to sing. They no. didn't want to be upstage. All these side men were frustrated front men. So <laughs> I, I, so I, 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 so I learned about delegation. So I said to the bass player, uh, do you know two songs? He's like, yeah, sure. Of course, yeah. Uh. <laughs> well, uh, we got his keys. How about the drummer? He knew two songs. Now I became the best boss in the <laughs> sliced bed because I'm giving them... <laughs> well, you got all this direction I'm going on that you never knew you could do. <laughs> I, it, just, it was just out of terror, believe me. So we got their three songs. I had two songs each. That's six, two, four, six. I had my two songs. Yeah. They got an instrumental, and in 90 seconds, we got our first set together with no rehearsal. Wow. And is this how confident that they all were and you were at that time? I and mean, you didn't have to have all these big rehearsals and all this checking in and checking out. It's just, it just I just happened. Yeah. I, I, so they I, all of a sudden the Irish show band got off and I'm backstage and the ladies and gentlemen direct from New York because I said I was a singer from New York and that's all they knew. And I, oh, I could tell you something that's a little embarrassing. I don't know. If you I can tell say. me. No, you can tell me. This is fine. I was, while they were going direct from New York, I mean, I didn't know what was going to happen. I coughed and I peed a little bit on the floor out of terror. You were nervous. And I looked down. It was just maybe the size of a pea. She tried to rub it out. <laughs> I just looked at it. I thought, Ina, if you ever become famous, never get big headed and just remember how terrified you well, are right now. At this moment. And it always kept me grounded. I never Coming got Coming back to reality. Yes. I never, I was just always that girl. I guarantee that's why she became so famous. I guarantee that because you okay. never let go of that being who you yes. actually were. Yes, and grateful and for what, And not being yeah. sort of, you know, I'm this, that, and the other. Never, I never Never, never so how did it go? I'm not <laughs> well, I ended up there over a year. I had 145 song repertoire. We were the house band and we played opposite. We, in fact, our last show was about two or three. I can't remember. Th you did three shows a night in those days. Wow. And so all of the entertainers from the strip used to come down. We became the late show place to go and to people go, would yeah. sit in. And that was my first job in so Vegas. So you must have been when Keely Smith was, she was up at the, the room. I remember at, her, at Kelly. Do, at the Duke, Kelly Smith. Yeah. Keely, Keely was Smith. that her name? Yeah, yeah, Keely Smith. She was up at the Dunes. I uh, and, then, and then there was Louis Prima. Oh, I knew uh, Joe, Sam Butera. Yeah. And then I got to know, you know, Sammy De well, It was a small town, so you met yeah. Liberace, and I met Frank, and all the entertain so you, entertainers uh, knew each other. So you were kind of all together and sort of, you know... Uh, not working together, but sort you of, you would know, run into each other because who else was up that late at night locally? <laughs> <laughs> you know, at Caesars. All I mean, the I crazy <laughs> visitors are up, but they, by this time they've gone They're, to bed. Exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah. we didn't get off till two. Oh. And then I just, I'll just sort of go up. Uh, then I went on to star in the Folly Bergere. And, uh, oh wow! What did you do in the Folie Bergere? Uh, what was that's the an old show that's not around anymore. It, obviously. Yeah, it was. The, it was the only show on the strip that had a female star. All the other shows, the Stardust show and the Casino de Brie had male stars. 300 girls auditioned for that show. When I, when I found out about it, and it's too long for me to tell you what happened, they, uh, I thought, well, the other two girls I know, maybe Keely and somebody else I knew, they're already working, so I'll go after it, right? Yeah. I had a friend who was an acrobat, and I saw the show with him because he wanted to know if he could do what was in the show, and then I heard there was auditions coming on. 
So I showed up. There were 300 girls there. Fortunately, oh, I got the part. And again... So you cut out of 300 girls? Yes. Ina. Ina's definitely a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I ended up going up to Harris and Reno. I headlined up there for about two, two years. I went up with a Frederick Abcar show. Oh my and they goodness. fired the first show. Well, that, they didn't fire it. I'm sorry. Please edit that out. They yeah. ended the first show. They ended the first show. Okay. And the hotel requested that I stay in for the second show. So okay. I stayed in, so you stayed in for, for the second show. And then they, I was the first singer in Nevada to be offered to go in the main room without a hit record. Because then, you know, you had to be a name. But, 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 but I was going to say, but by this time, you had quite a big name out there. I mean, you must have already been on a holiday. Everybody, I mean, it had to be. Well, I did. I did because I... See how cool she is about it? Well, I, you know, I... Uh, because there was a small town then, and I was on the front. Yeah, they had a rag, like a newspaper that went, what's on? And, and of course, me and all my feathers, I would be on that every day. And I did a lot of doubles, and I, uh, I did tell Jerry Lewis Telethon and was on radio quite a bit. Sig Sackowitz back in those days, and Mark Tan was a, a, a he was basically the critic that, that really promoted all the shows. And so after Harris, when I was in Harris, I got offered to go into the main room. And I came oh back down God. to Vegas, and due to the conditions that were required by the uh, people who did the, no, no, who did the 36-piece band charts, because there was live orchestras in that day, so I needed 36-piece so orchestra 36 charts. 36 which you don't see now. Right. It was nothing was taped. And uh, I, I couldn't make a deal with any of them, because they were, wanted me to do things that I wouldn't do. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> yeah, wink, wink. <laughs> So I ended up, I met a guy, I ended up, uh, I, I turned down the $780,000 a year, it was $15,000 a week to start, and I got married and thought, I've done all of this, I have plenty of pictures to show my grandchildren one day. Now, now the children and everything well, else. This guy was a dancer and, uh, and I found out, and we kept getting robbed mysteriously. Uh, I would come home, the drawers would be turned over, and he'd say, honey, we were robbed. And you know, I would get suicide was it him? I found out two years later. Oh, sounds like him. He was a compulsive gambler. He robbed me. My jewelry went. Every dime I ever made went. You know, thing. It, we were robbed three times, and, and each he time was we. The one that did the he robbing. kept saying we were. I we need were to. Robbed. We need to get out of town. Yeah. Well, he said I want to get out of town, but he kept saying we were probably robbed. Probably owed too much money to the casinos. I had no idea it was him then. So we moved, and he started forging checks. This was two years later. I found out I was oh pregnant, no. and at the same time he started forging checks, and I found out it was him that was robbing me. But robbing him. And I had given How up sad everything. Was all that? So I, I confronted him, and we split up when I was three months pregnant. And I went down to St. Thomas, where my father lived for 47 years. He retired there, very young. And I, um, uh, I, I had the baby, I got a divorce. And then I moved up. There was a very prominent Washingtonian artist who had a gallery down in St. Thomas who my father was friends with. Yeah. He gave me a job up in the Washington area. He fell in love with a girl, gave her my job, and the Friday before Christmas fired me because she'd do everything <laughs> for nothing. Of course. And he was paying me a salary and commission. So there I was with a high school education, a four-month-old child. I didn't know where I was. And a singer, and a beautiful singer. 75. Don't forget the beautiful singer part. But in Washington, that's a deterrent. Doesn't, I was going to say that this has nothing to do with politics. Well, well, when you come from Vegas and you've been carrying 75 pounds of feathers on your back, right away they think you're some ex-hooker from Vegas or something. You have no, let me put it to you this way, you have no credibility. No, yeah. In those days. Right, right, right. This was, this was now in the 80s and the late 80s. And so now I, I found a company that would train me. I went and got my insurance license. Their whole motto was women can't make it in this business. They were all from Georgia. Well, women can never make it, but they always seem to get out there, don't they? But they were blatant about it. Yes. They were, they were vocalized about it. I actually slept on my office floor for six months, homeless in a public building, eating cold food out of a can after being a big star. But I wow. wanted to take care of my daughter, and I didn't want to marry somebody for money. No. I always swore I would never do, because no. to me it's not only, 
It's hurtful to the guy. I couldn't but be that dishonest. Love. There's always something going to go on. Something's going to happen, and it's just not going to work. And I and as and just as with the with my with my manager, yeah. I couldn't be dishonest with him. No. And I couldn't be dishonest with somebody because I got right into the Washington Who's Who, and I had plenty of offers. But I thought I'm going to go out and do something. Yeah. So I, after six months, I got my own. I I trained. I got my own office. I hired and trained people into the business. And I nested this them out of my an office. Entrepreneur. You are definitely 100% an entrepreneur. And within uh, six years, eight years, I had 200 offices in 40 states in Canada. We are, our average insurance premium was are 600 you still doing a year. That? No, no, I sold that business after 20 years. And I was the first woman to make six figures in that company. Wow. I founded the Female Executive Conference while I was doing that. And, and in Washington, D.C. area, people would fly in from all over the country and I yeah. would help them because nobody was helping women, women there. Women in those days. Or well, cared about single uh, mothers and yeah. they never took them seriously and I really yeah. cared and took the time and I, hundreds of women would, would, were better off and their lives were better off and their kids had something to eat. So with all this going along, yes, ma'am. where are you now? You know, you, you, she's reached, you've reached every goal. You've yeah. done everything. You've got, even in between all that, she had a child. You have one child? Yes. Just yes. the one. Even in between all this, you had your child and you t took care of the child and oh, everything sure. else. Yeah. So what's going on now? Well, right now, my, my daughter's in Denmark, actually. She has a rock star boyfriend that just signed a big, big uh, multi-legged tour deal. Their name is Marianne Cotton. Buy their albums and CDs, please. Is she in the band singing? <laughs> no, 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 she's just, she's just married. She, she works for a uh, company called 1812 Society and sells high-end custom suits. And she also okay. does a lot of modeling her here. And um, I st I've gone into acting now. Back into acting. Yeah, oh well, goodness. I want to get back into the arts, and maybe yes. I'm meeting with a, a, a piano player on Friday, maybe to start singing again. I want to do something in the media or something in the well, arts. You ought to go down to Piero's and, and check out um, Pierre Zadara because she now has a little singing group there. I don't know uh -huh. if you've been there. Yeah, I've been there in the old days. Yeah. 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 No, my, now I mean she's okay. doing. Oh, she's fabulous. Pierre is absolutely amazing. Okay. But she does have a lot of singers come up. Uh -huh. To sing, so you can have a cup of, you know. Well, I'll check that yeah, out. Yeah, check it out. Okay. So, yeah, absolutely. Okay. But um, but you've had quite an exciting life. Um, what was the best part of your whole life up until now? I would say the best part of my whole life was when I was doing the female executive conference. Oh my goodness! Really? really? I I mean, there you see the difference. People would write me letters, heartfelt letters, of how yeah. their life changed. And somebody said something to me once I'll never forget. They said, you know the few minutes before you die, you don't think about the last deal you did. No. Or how much money you have in the bank. I've often wondered what you think about before you're about to die. Well, a girlfriend of mine just died about three weeks ago. Oh, I'm so sorry. And, yeah, and I'm often wondering what was she thinking, and she knew slowly she was getting going and leaving. And I, like what you just said, what do you think about? I don't know. I think it's how you made a difference that really matters. Yes. Maybe with your children. It yeah. could be with your yeah. family. Yeah. But I think it would be something more humane. Yes. And that's, and that's, to me, when I think back of all the people that started with nothing, were afraid, they were barely could talk to people. I taught them how to speak. I gave them self-confidence. You gave them that confidence. You gave I them that. I awarded them constantly. Yes, I had yes. constant award banquets, retreats. So I learned how I'm very a good event put because I put on events but constantly. Yeah. Well, constantly in ball. So is that I what you're doing now? No, I spoke in arenas all the time. For the last 10 years, I spoke in arenas and did motivate, not motivational, but instructional. I taught advanced business. And any entrepreneur, yeah. I, I was the number one requested speaker in a, in a company that had hired 2 million agents. So I would like to do something that is, makes a difference. I would like to take all the experience I have and uh, put do it something all together. media generated. Now, do you want to give it to everybody, or do you want to give it sort of mainly to the women? Or do you think the, no, do you think the women no. still need help? Women, listen, everybody needs help. Men, men. No, there you go. I love well, that. Men, all men need to believe me. Yeah. When I was a little girl, I thought anybody in, the, in a suit knew everything. Yeah. No, I was so. in that generation yeah. where I just believed that, you know. Yeah. But I found that they have the same insecurities. Yeah. They have the same failings. So you say you can't find a boyfriend, they can't find a girlfriend. Exactly. It's the same all the way around, and it, and it is the exactly, same. Exactly. You know, How you can know, then? Yeah, I do know people because are I know people. people are people, and I well, I had a big 16 years with y the younger generation, so I fulfilled a, a, a void in my life, uh -huh. and I put it all together and did similar to what you, I've done similar things to you, but oh. mine was with children. Oh, happy. But how can people reach you to sort of you know to book you and? 
Well, I think the best way to reach me is by, um, I'm on Facebook, uh, Ina Holiday. You Ina, can just remember that name. Ina, Ina Holiday, Holiday, with one L, okay. H-O-L-I-D-A-Y, and just PM me, and I'd be happy to give you more personal information. Absolutely. She's got okay. a lot of stories she can tell you, too, but she's not putting them over the air. But maybe I'll have her back again, and we'll better get a few of them out of you. Because <laughs> you've got some great stories with I the do. San and, and all the, you know, Wayne Newton. Oh. You knew Wayne Newton. She yes, knew, I knew I mean, Wayne. I knew, knew Steve Wynn. I knew Charlie Kane, who was the entertainment director. I knew, I mean, you know everyone. Said, yeah, I everyone. used to date Peter Lawford in, in, in Europe. I forgot about him. He was <laughs> part of the Rat Pack. <laughs> I forgot about him. There's so <laughs> many of them. But that is typical Vegas. Vegas is absolutely full of stories and full of, you know, the entertainment business. And you, Anna Holiday, is one of those that's been through the whole thing. And she still has a smile on her face. Oh, and she's still got I'm ready happy. to move forward and do more. We'll be right back. Vegas Live with Nina. Thank you. And don't forget to go to YouTube and subscribe. Thank, Thank you, Nina. Thank you Thank very you much. Dear. It was lovely.